Okay, confession time. Um, I am not great at keeping the yarn labels for my yarn. Actually, that's not entirely true. I, I do keep the yarn labels and I scatter them all over the house like a little treasure hunt. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel and to my knitting podcast series. I am so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Samantha and I am the knitter and knitwear designer behind The Stick Chick. So I've got a bit of a, I think, fun video for you guys today. It's not really in the whole finished objects, works in progress, acquisitions format because I've been doing a lot of knitting from my stash lately in kind of an attempt to clear out what I have before I buy anymore. And kind of an inadvertent consequence of this has been that my leftover or scrap yarn drawer has been growing quite a bit. Um, and I've been kind of, there have been some ideas turning in my head about how to deal with the scrap yarn that I have and kind of you know, knock some of that out of the way so that when I work on future projects, then my scrap yarn drawer isn't kind of overfilling where it is now. I think you can see it is, it is pretty, pretty bad at the moment. The damage is, is severe. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I realized that at this point, this is all scrap yarn that's built up from projects over the last almost two years. And I'm starting to forget what's in there. So I kind of, decided that I wanted to inventory what I had and I figured that as I was doing that I could take you guys along with me and just kind of share the projects that I've used that yarn on and then kind of the ideas that I have for the yarn in the future. Um, just because I'm, I'm sure many knitters are in the same position where you guys have so many scraps and you just don't know what to do with it. Um, so hopefully we um, have a couple inspiring ideas and you can give me some ideas to inspire me to use my scrap yarn. Really quickly, before we dive into the Pandora's box of yarn next to me, I wanted to share a little bit about what I'm wearing. So if you've watched my first ever knitting podcast, you will have seen this in Recently Finished Objects, but this is my Slaya vest that is knit in one strand of Drops Air in the color Purple Haze, and it has this kind of mock cable pattern down the front and the back and this little Italian bind off ribbing and buttons on the sides, and it's been kind of a, you know, cold summer day favorite for me. And this is super exciting because I think by the time this video comes out, it will be released. So if you want, you can purchase the pattern and you can make your own Soleil vest and we can match, which is the ideal. So this brings us into the first bit of leftover yarn that I have, which is, I'm gonna be popping in and out of the screen. drops air in the color purple haze which i use to test up oh, to test knit to knit the sample for the slaya vest um so i had four or five signs of this gifted by a friend um and i ended up using less than four so now i've got quite a bit of drops air in purple haze left over and i want to figure out exactly how much and put that into my scrap yarn inventory um, and just for reference, um, when I say scrap yarn inventory, what I'm documenting here is the yarn type, the colorway, the grams that I have left, the length per skein so I know how much yarn I'm working with, the recommended needle size so I can see which yarns I can maybe mix and match together, and then also the number of skeins that I have if I have a complete number of skeins. So. Let's get started. I'm also using this handy dandy kitchen scale that I borrowed from my boyfriend um, so I can see exactly how much yarn that I have. Okay, so I think I have a full skein of this, but I'm going to just go ahead and measure everything together just in case. Oh yeah, okay. No. <laughs> yeah, so we've got 69 grams of drops air in purple haze which is a pretty good amount of yarn. I think it's good enough to do maybe a small project like a hat 
or a cowl or a pair of mittens, but I do have more drops air. Um, so I was hoping to see if I could potentially maybe combine because I work with Drops Air so much, it's one of my favorite yarns. Um, and it would be really cool if I could do like a color work project with my leftover yarn. So let's see what other Drops Air colors I have. So now that I've measured out a like fairly large quantity of Drops Air, I think I'm gonna go for figuring out which other ones I have in a fairly decent quantity as well. Cause I do have some like veritable scrap scraps, you know, like less than 10 grams kind of probably per skein. Um, but I do have quite a bit of this drops air, um, which is in the shade Sage Green, and I used it to test knit the Olea jumper for Pages and Projects way back when. I think it was a, almost a year ago, kind of when I started my knitting Instagram for the first time. So that was um, that's a good memory to think back on, and that's kind of that's the fun part, right? About like using all these scrap yarns together in like a bigger project is like you have all these memories connected with the different projects that you um, have used the yarn in and then you have all of that kind of together in one garment which i think is pretty cool so you know what why don't i just like grab a bunch of this out and then i can go weigh it all together which might be a better idea than maybe like going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth so we've got this and then i've also got almost a whole skein left of drops air in sage green from when i knit the puppy dog sweater for holly swove on instagram and some black drops air from the same project so let's go see how much we have okay so for the sea green drops air, or the sage green, I mean. I have one whole skein. So, ba -ba -ba -ba. trying to keep all the yarn quantities, or yarn qualities, I mean, in the same kind of location on the Excel sheets that it's easier to come back to and see where things are. So we've got one whole skein and that's, 43 grams of another skein. So that's almost two whole skeins. That is not bad. So 93 grams total. Um, and again, I <laughs> the saddest thing about this though is that I do have, like I have a lot of the purple haze and I have a lot of the sage green, but I don't think the purple haze and the sage green really look so nice together. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's also a little wrench in my plans there. Moss green, you've got 41 grams, so almost an entire skein. And I've got 44 grams of the black. So filling all that in. But the inner analyst in me is loving this. This is great. Yes. All right, so I don't know about these colors. I think, I mean, the black is like really versatile. So I could probably hold it together um, with either the moss green and do something or the sage green and do something, but not both. Um, let me know, guys, if you if you have a preference, if you kind of, oh, I'll stick the black in the middle so you can probably see that better. But yeah, I'm thinking maybe like a hat or a cowl. Um, or I might just wait until I have a couple more full skeins of drops here because I will, I will have more drops air scraps um, and then I could make something like a Fair Isle sweater. I actually just very recently bought a book with all these um, Fair Isle motifs just to be like, oh, I could mix and match these and use all these different colors and make a really nice, unique little sweater out of it. And that's kind of my dream, but maybe, maybe that is not to be, but let me know what you think about this. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, um, this is the rest of my drops air, you guys. Um, so this is what I meant by scrappy scrappy. Um, so we've got quite a bit in the way of colorways and yarn quantities, and it's gonna take a bit to untangle it all, um, but bear with me. So the first, ooh, get it off the scale. 
the first bit of drops air that I have is a little bit of, um, I think it's called medium gray. And this is left over from when I knit my Lisconor sweater. So I don't, I mean, at first glance, it doesn't look like even half a skein, but let's see. That is 21 grams. So that's not bad. That could be, that could be very easily kind of a contrast color in a Fair Isle sweater if that's what I want to do with that, just because medium gray does go with everything. So, oh, where do I put this now? Just over here. <laughs> um, and then we've got, this is all of the drops air in pearl gray that I have. Um, and if you watched my knitting on a bus kind of travel nitty video, um, that's what I was wearing when I was sitting at home talking about my bus experience. Um, I used it to knit the Bulgagenser by Annette Olpheim and I held it double to do that. So that's why I have, I think, two separate skeins of leftover. And in total, that is 33 grams. So again, not a bad contrast color for a Fair Isle sweater if I wanted to use a more kind of um, bright shade. And I do have those coming up as well. Um, speaking of which, this is Drops Air in, oh gosh, I don't want to say, Goldenrod, something like that. I will look it up and I will put the actual color in the little box. Um, but this is left over from when I knit the Bubblegrenzer, or the bubble sweater, that was designed by June Estrich, who is a, um, uh, a part-time knitting designer in Norway. She's also a student, I believe. Um, and yeah, this was actually, this was when I was kind of on my Norwegian pattern kick, and I was trying to start reading those and kind of picking up on patterns that I thought would be easy to follow in Norwegian. Um, and it called for like four contrast colors, so I chose some pretty bright ones, and this was one of them. So, let's see. 38 grams. So we're gonna call that Drops Air. I'm gonna call it Golden Yellow. I'm not sure if that's right, but it seems close enough for me, and I think I'll be able to figure out the colorway based on that description. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally doing everything I can to not have to deal with this mess that you see here. I'm just whittling down at the other yarn so I can avoid it. But this is, okay, this is Dropped Air in Ruby Red, which was also from the Bubble Um And that I have 22 grams. So guys, this really could be a sweater. And if it does, I might just take you along on the process of knitting it because, and I already forgot how much that is, 21 grams, um, because that would be kind of a fun thing to see, I think, and it would be really easy to do progress check-ins and stuff where you kind of, you have one fair owl motif, and then you have another fair owl motif, and so it, it's got very quick check-in points. All right, I think we're coming towards the end of our very bright drops air. This is some kind of peacock blue. Um, and that is 12 grams. So that's really scrappy. Drops air, peacock blue, and 12 grams. Yes. Oh, and I also forgot, I forgot in the last bit of yarn that I showed you that I do have more of this moss green. So I'm just gonna add 11 grams of moss green to the previous amount of moss green, which was 41. So I actually have 52, which is a whole skein of moss green, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and then we've got, gosh, what is this even? I think this is also the, um, the puppy dog sweater by Holly Swove. So I bought one skein of this brown. I think it's actually just called brown um, to do the, um, what is it called? It's the duplicate stitching for the little puppy faces along the yoke of the sweater. And I didn't think it would use up an entire skein. I was like, these are ears for a dog. How much can it possibly use up? And it did use up almost an entire skein, um, which I guess makes sense because I did the duplicate stitch in double knitting, double knitting, in double thread. So it ate away towards the center of the skein. And then I was like, oh look, 
book, but I didn't have the heart to throw it away because doesn't it just hurt a little bit to throw away yarn and yarn scraps? It hurts me. It hurts me so much that I'm gonna show you actually um, towards the end of this video what I do with like the little bitty odds and ends, like the ones that I cut off after I block um, because I can't bring myself to throw those away either. I'm just like, oh, this was such expensive yarn and I don't know, it's like you, you spend so long knitting something that you have all these memories tied with it and then you're like, you just don't wanna let it go. So, so yes. Tangents aside, apparently I have three grams of this, guys. Three whole grams of brown yarn that I am going to keep it and I will find something to do with it. I actually was thinking, because um, I, I do have some of these earthy tones coming up, um, and what would be kind of cool would be to do a marled glove pattern. So using kind of like this yarn and maybe holding it together with like the lighter yarn or like the white or something and then knitting like double stranded drops air on gosh i don't know maybe like seven millimeter needles um and then just whenever i run out of the color just kind of changing it out with something else and then you have this kind of really playful colorful um, mittens that are one of a kind um, and maybe I'll even make a free pattern for those and have that out as a way to use up your scrappy scraps, like the ones that you have three grams left. Um, Cause that would be, that would be pretty cool. And it's, it's so soft and then they would be so nice and warm or you could even, I mean, I don't felt my yarn, but I'm sure, I'm sure you could make a pattern where you made them a little bit too large and then you felted them down. And that would be like the ideal warm mittens. Um, so yeah, that's been kind of an idea that's been churning around the back of my head, but I think I will make that a reality and I will probably use this brown yarn in that. So let me just add that to my inventory. And honestly, you know what? I should probably add like a purpose section here. <laughs> and then when I think of a purpose, just like put it in there. So I'm definitely gonna say, you know, what is this? Not scrappy, I don't like the word scrappy. Marled mittens for the brown yarn. Um, and then whatever I decide will definitely go into the marled mittens, I'll put there. Otherwise, I have all this other drops of air and I can see how much of it I have. You know what would be really cool actually? Is using the peacock blue and the brown. I think this looks really nice together. Um, and I think that would be really cute if I used the peacock blue as like an accent color and then I had like brown and white and tan and something else kind of go into them. I think that would be really interesting. Let me know if you agree or if you see another brighter color of drops air here that you think would be nicer in mittens like those. Um, but yeah, so I've got more neutrals coming up. This is the tangle that I was hoping to save till the end. Oh gosh, this is drops air in um, in beige or beige gray. One of those. Um, so one of the, um, someone that I work with liked my bug against her so much that she wanted one herself, um, and I bought this yarn and made it for her. So I have this yarn left over from her bug against her, and it is twenty grams. So that's a fair bit. I think 20 is fairly standard, actually. I'm gonna call this beige. It's fairly standard um, leftover yarn, I think. It's a, it's a good amount. But then when you think drops air is 150 meters per 50 gram skein. So if you multiply the weight by three, you'll get the length that you have. So really for like these 20 gram skeins, I have like 60 meters. And that's not bad. That You can do quite a bit with 60 meters of yarn when you start putting that together with other... Um, and I'm hoping I'll be able to figure out something cool. Okay, so last but not least, in my drops air, I have... I think this is natural or off-white. That was the main color for my Bobligenser. Um, so this is... Um, I think this is like a skein and some leftover because I held it double. And I have seven grams. So this would be perfect for my marled mittens too. So drops air, I'm gonna call it natural. And I have seven grams and we're gonna say 
marled mittens that for some reason did not autofill, but that is okay. So yeah, <laughs> I think Drops Arab is the lion's share of like yarn quality that I have. So now we're gonna move on to some other kinds of yarn if you got a little bit sick about hearing about Drops Air and I will tell you more about the other scraps. <laughs> okay, so the next yarn I have to show you guys is um, definitely a bulky weight. This is Drop Snow in the shade Copper that I used to knit the leaf sweater. Is it the leaf sweater? Falling leaves? Leaf play. Leaf play. The leaf play sweater by Drops Design. Um, and I bought this as a yarn pack. Um, so it gave me, I, I selected the size that I wanted to knit and it gave me exactly how many skeins you're supposed to use. But I did deviate from the pattern because the pattern um, for leaf play has these really wide bell sleeves at the bottom and I don't, I mean, I didn't really want that in this kind of chunky yarn so I tapered the sleeves instead. And I did not realize that tapering my sleeves would save me so much yarn, but it did. So now I have a skein and some change left over. So adding that into my inventory. Copper, I've got one full skein and how much more? And 32 grams. So I have 82 grams of Drops Snow, which I think this yarn is um, 50 meters for 50 grams. So that gives me 82 meters of this pretty bulky yarn. They recommend that you use nine millimeter needles. Um, so I could probably, I'm thinking about making some kind of accessory with this, cause I don't really, I don't want to hold it. I think Fair Isle with yarn that is this bulky might be, and, and I say this as someone who lives in the Arctic Circle, I think it would be a bit too warm. <laughs> um, so I definitely do not want to wear a Fair Isle sweater that uses drop snow, and so I'm not going to try to save up enough bulky weight yarn to make one. I would much rather just make myself something like a hat or a cowl, and this is perfect for that, I think, as long as I have some more yarn to work with. So yes, this should, this has kind of like a purpose, but not a designated purpose just yet. Like I, I kind of, I have an idea, but I don't have anything concrete in mind, but it is good to know that I have this when I want larger needles to work with. And the other chunky weight yarn that I have in my scrappy yarn, leftover yarn pile is this Drops Wish in the shade Marine Blue or Navy Blue that I used to test knit the Salerno cardigan by the Knit Pro Girl earlier this year. Um, so it actually, it was quite tragic. I bought the suggested number of skeins and then as I was knitting the button band, I think like the last six rows, I ran out of yarn. And that was just really, really sad. So I had to go in and buy a whole extra skein and I have almost all of it left over, which is 49 grams. So guys, basically this is an entire skein of yarn. Um, so let's just add that in. I'm gonna call it marine blue because I will know what that means. And I have 49 grams, so I cannot call it an entire skein, but it is very, very close. Um, and I was actually thinking, and I don't know how it would, oof, how it would work, but I wanted to hold these together, maybe? Because they are, they both have um, nine millimeter as the recommended needle size. So my theory was I could do something with these together and I don't know, maybe like a two color brioche or um, just a one by one rib, but like different colored one by one rib or I don't know. What do you think about? Cause I, they are, theoretically complementary colors and they should look nice together and, and you have kind of like the dark marine blue and the really bright copper and that that may look really nice or it may look kind of, I don't know, like a bit comical. Um, so 
let me know what you think. Do you think I can hold these yarns together and make something cool with that? I'd love to hear um, because then I could I could very easily make like a hat or a cowl with these two together. I definitely have enough yarn, but if I'm just using the drop snow or I'm just using the drop swish, I don't think I have quite enough yet. So, mm -hmm. jury's still out. So next yarn on the list is Drops Fable, which is thinner than any kind of yarn I usually work with. Um, but I bought it because I was doing a test knit for the Stay Wild Beanie for Grey Owl Knits on Instagram, um, which is actually a really, really cute color work hat pattern. And I mean, it is so detailed because the yarn is so thin that you can kind of make all those fine little pine tree accents and stuff because of it. Um, but I think the pattern said that it would consume 50 grams of sock yarn for the main color and about half a skein for the contrasting color. And I ended up using less for some reason. So now I have Drops Fable in this navy blue left over and also some of, I think this is like Tex-Mex, I'm not quite sure. It's some kind of self-striping print. Um, it's a superwash treated sock wool, but I have never made socks. Um, confession. So I, I don't think I would start um, now with this yarn. But um, Grey Elements does have another pattern on her website that I actually got as a thank you for test knitting called the Wee Field Mouse Mitts, which um, it's just a really cute little pattern with little mice on these kind of, it, it looks like a traditional Norwegian mitten shape, um, which I've been wanting to try out. So I think at some point, because I do have enough yarn to make those here with this is the main color and this is the contrasting color and that should use up this whole skein and then I'll have some of this left. Um, but yeah, at some point when I am feeling like using 2.5 millimeter needles again, I will cast those on. So these have a very specific designated purpose, um, but let's just see how much we have just for fun. So 27 grams of the navy blue and 32 grams of the Tex, I'm, I'm just gonna call it Tex-Mex. I'll know what that means. I, this is literally the only drops fable that I have. So if it's not navy blue, it's the other one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So text max. And I always, I talked to you about it when I forget how much it was. So it's like 27 and 32. And these are going for the wee field mouse mittens. Lots of mittens. I don't know, I, I think that's what kind of comes to mind because I, I always want to, I have these high hopes of casting on for a, um, a scrappy sweater or a, um, a leftover yarn sweater. But then when push comes to shove, I think, and when I start thinking practically, I think mittens are usually the way I want to go. So I have a lot um, of mitten ideas. But hopefully we'll squeeze a sweater out of it yet. So while we're on the topic of thinner yarns, I have a few leftover skeins of Drops Alpaca, which is another one of their, um, if you've bought Drops yarns before, you know that they go from yarn weight, I want to say A through F, which is like ultra chunky. It's like they're polaris, they're really thick yarn. Um, but this is all yarn group A, which is the fingering weight yarn that they sell. Um, and I have two skeins and some change of this medium brown shade that I used to make a self-drafted cardigan that I will have pictures of for you. Um, but that probably will not become a pattern just because I 
there was quite a bit of seaming involved in it um, and as I've grown as a knitter I have realized that I hate seaming um, and I would much rather do things um, in a way that they're kind of more enjoyable to knit and so I, I just don't think that would make the greatest knitting experience for other people to have to kind of knit up a cardigan in five different parts and then seam the entire thing together when it's so much easier to just knit it in the round. Um, but I do have this bit of yarn left over and I was thinking it might, because um, I have some of this yarn as well, which is a slightly lighter shade of Drops Alpaca. Um, and the story behind this is I actually bought this to make the Skatbelgense um, with a thread of Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. But I bought it online um, and I bought like the Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk and this alpaca, I think they were both called Brown. Um, and so I was like, okay, it's the same company, it's the same yarn, it's the same name, so obviously it'll match. Um, and then when the Brushed Alpaca Silk came in, it was much, much lighter than this yarn. Um, so I put this yarn to the side and then I went into my local yarn store with the brushed alpaca silk and asked them what could match best in this quality of yarn and they pointed me to this shade of drops alpaca instead. So this is left over from the Skottelgenser, but this was Skottelgenser designated before it became a self-drafted cardigan. Um, but I'm thinking they could probably work pretty well together, um, just with some kind of fairly easy color work design, I'm thinking. Maybe like an Icelander cowl or vest maybe even? I don't know if I have enough yarn for that, but I do. I mean, what is this? This is like 167 meters in 50 grams, and I definitely have over 50 grams. So that might be enough, I mean over 300 meters, um, especially with a whole skein of this and then some extra, but I'm not committing to it yet. Um, but let's just see how much we have. So this is two full skeins, so I'm not gonna weigh them, but I do have 14 extra grams of the, I wanna, I wanna call that medium brown and then I'm gonna call this beige. Um, so this is 50 grams of the beige, and <laughs> let's see if it even registers, two grams, two whole grams of extra yarn. Um, so, ba, drops, alpaca, which is, it's such a pretty yarn. I was so obsessed with it when it came in because it is super, super soft. It, it feels like the kind of thing that you would use for baby garments, um, for example, uh, just because it is, it, it is 100% alpaca and it's just, it's the softest fiber. I think the only thing that would maybe prevent me from using it for um, very young kids is the fact that because it's alpaca, the fibers are, maybe let me easier to show you here, they're just a tad bit long and kind of fluffy-ish almost and if that comes loose, it might irritate uh, your airways as a baby, not an adult, hopefully. Um, but yeah, just very beautiful yarn if I can work up the um, fortitude to knit on small knitting needles ever again. Um, because if you watch my last podcast, you'll know that I have made the switch over to larger needles for the time being, and I am loving it. So it's good to know that I have this, and I will come back to it and try to make something with um, with these together. In addition to the alpaca that I just showed you, I actually think something that would look really nice with it is the um, Duvet d'Anjou from La Droguerie, which is a very specific kind of yarn. It's a combination of, um, gosh, I wanna say Angora Rabbit and uh, Merino Wool. And I picked this up, um, as I mentioned in, I think both of my previous vlogs, um, when I was on vacation in Nice, I picked this up at a local yarn shop. And it's a very kind of, it, it's a brand of yarn that they sell specifically. You won't find it in other yarn stores. 
Um, and I was playing a bit of yarn chicken as I was using this on my bunya cardigan. Um, but I do have a little bit of it left. And I, I mean, obviously it, it's hard to figure out what this combines with, but I'm thinking just like feeling the weights of the Drops Alpaca and the Duvet d'Anjou. The recommended needle size is quite different. They recommend a 4.5 millimeter needle for the Duvet d'Anjou and the Drops recommends a three millimeter knitting needle for the Alpaca. But I mean, I'm just looking at fibers and I can try to pull these out and show you Oof, if it cooperates with me. But I mean, the, the Duvet d'Anjou is slightly thicker but not by much. I mean, I, I think that, I don't know if it's just the way that they want you to knit an airier fabric and maybe in the Nordic countries, because I've noticed that Sunless Garden does this too. Um, they recommend knitting needles that are just a little bit smaller than what I personally would use. Um, uh, so this is kind of the opposite. It's almost like La Drogorie recommended knitting needles that are a bit too big for what I would use to knit like regular stockinette fabric. Um, but I think these would hold really well together on like a three and a half millimeter knitting needle maybe. Um, and I have just enough of this to make it, I don't know, maybe like a second contrast color and that would look very, very cute with these two browns together. Like I think that would look pretty nice and classy um, just these two neutrals and this red together. So I'm thinking maybe that's going to become a thing and I'll kind of just group all of these yarns in, um, in a similar place so I, I know that there's going to be a project with all of them together. So let's see how much I have. Okay, it's nine grams and I think that this actually, do the double shoot. It came with um, the same meterage ish as Drops Alpaca, um, which was about 167 meters per 50 grams. So I should have, if I have nine grams, that should, I should have about, oh gosh, I wanna say maybe. 30, 30 something meters of yarn, um, which which is pretty good, I think, um, just using it as a little accent color, especially because I have so much of these two, so then I can just kind of speckle this throughout. Um, but I don't know what I would make with it. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. A scarf or a hat or a vest, because I, I mean, I have a 73 centimeter bust so making a vest, and I, I prefer, but as you can probably tell, I prefer crop vests. So it doesn't take a lot of yarn to make a vest for me. So maybe, maybe I'll make one of those. Um, let me know if you have any ideas. So the next yarn that I have to show you guys is actually, so, um, okay, confession time. Um, I am not great at keeping the yarn labels. For my yarn. Actually, that's not entirely true. I, I do keep the yarn labels and I scatter them all over the house like a little treasure hunt. Um, but what I do not do is keep the yarn label with my leftover yarn so that I know what yarn it is. And there are some yarns that are very distinctive, like the Drops Air that I showed you that, I mean, it, it's obviously Drops Air. But then, so like I have this yarn and this yarn, which I, I know um, somehow that this one is Drops Alaska and this one is Drops Nepal. But if I didn't know that, it would be literally impossible to tell. Um, and I really, I should do a better job of keeping my labels. I've, I've started now. I actually, I was quite proud of myself. When I finished my last project, I weighed the yarn I had, had left. I like wrote the weight onto the yarn label. I reattached the yarn label and I put it into my scrap drawer and I was like, yes, that is what a responsible knitter should do. Um, but this was pre-responsible knitter. Um, so, so this, what I'm going to show you now is a mix of Drops Alaska and Drops Nepal because I mean, they, they're the same yarn weight. Um, it's the same producer. It's the same care instructions. It's, I used it in the same project. So 
Um, I have quite a bit left over of Drops Alaska, which are, oh, okay, there, um, which are these two. Um, and then Drops Nepal, which is all of this. And most of the Alaska and the Nepal that I have, I use to test knit the Meli Melo sweater by Yasmin Knits. Um, because it was such a great way to use up my scrap yarn. Um, and I will, I will link that in the description below because I think that's a great sweater design in and of itself, but it's also such a great way to use your scraps. Um, and unfortunately, some of my scraps, like I had some scrap Nepal that was black, and as I was finishing the sweater, I ran out of scrap yarn, so then I had to go out and I had to purchase a new skein of yarn to finish my scrappy sweater, which kind of defeats the purpose of the scrappy sweater, but it did use up more scraps than yarn I had to buy. And then I had to buy single skeins. So it wasn't the worst thing. It, it did, there was a net stash loss after knitting that project. Um, but I'm actually thinking that because um, all of these yarns look really nice together, I think. Like this is a really nice color scheme. So I'm thinking I might knit up like maybe a chunky cowl or something in all of these colors and do some kind of fair isle motif. Um, I'm really into fair isle. I know I've been mentioning fair isle quite a bit um, and the reason for that is just because I think it's a really cute way to use up multiple colors. It, it looks a little nicer to me than just stripes or something for example um, and also because it makes it kind of double thick and fall in the Arctic is approaching. And so having thicker winter garments is definitely a good thing. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into my handy dandy little book of um, Fair Isle motifs and pick something out and then have these scraps go to a project like that. So let's weigh them and see what we're working with. So this is Drops Nepal in, I want to say, moss green. It's almost an entire skein. It's 41 grams. So, that drops Nepal, moss green, and 41 grams. Which is, I think drops Nepal is like 70 meters per 50 grams. So that's quite a bit of drops Nepal. Um, and drops Alaska is the same length per skein. Um, this is drops Nepal in off-white, and I'm gonna say that together I have a whole skein. Let's see. No, actually, I do not. I have 38 grams, which is so funny. <laughs> I definitely thought it would be more than a skein, but that's okay. Drop some pull. I'm just gonna call it natural, because that's what I call that off-white color. And what else is Drops Nepal here? This is a really pretty shade of Drops Nepal. Um, I think it's called petrol. I actually, I think I did use this for my uh, Meli Melo sweater, but I bought it to use for a Ridari sweater, which is actually a very, very common um, kind of circular yoke Icelandic fair owl pattern. And I knit that for my boyfriend's grandpa for Christmas. So that was fun. That was actually my first gift knit. Um, and I can put a little picture up of my boyfriend modeling the sweater um, before we gave it away. Um, but he chose this color, and I never would have, because I, I gravitate away from dark yarns. I do not like dark yarn, um, but this is just so pretty. I love the little, like, the way that the light catches it and the nuance in it. It's just super nice. So yeah, let's see. Why does that say six grams? Ah, because the white is resting on it. That would mess up the measurements. Nine grams. So that's going to be very much an accent color because I don't think petrom, petrol, because there's not that much in nine grams of drops in Paul, but I think there's just enough for maybe like a little accent lining or maybe like a cute little edge or something. And this is Drops Alaska in, I want to say tan, beige, tan, I don't know what that means. I'll put all the colorways in. And we have 14 grams of it. So I'm honestly, I feel like it's, it's super nice when you can use up your tiny scraps. Cause like, I don't feel the same level of urgency to use up like 
the drops air that I have two skeins of the sage green, like full skeins, as I do like, oh, I have to use this up, kind of, you know, just to get it out of the way, just because it's almost gone. So I need to just go ahead and finish it up. This is Drops Nepal in, I think it's called Forget Me Not Blue. I used it for my Arrakis pullover test knit for Joan Knits Things on Instagram. And then I used up some scraps for that sweater in the Meli Melo sweater. And then this is what I had left. So that is seven grams. So another fun accent color, just like the patrol. So forget me not, I'm just gonna make that one word. We've got seven grams of it. Okay, and last but not least, I've got this black Drops Alaska that I think is almost a full skein. And drum roll please, 38 grams. So we have just as much Drops Nepal, oh, Drops Nepal, Drops Alaska in the shade black as we do Drops Alaska in the shade natural. So that's pretty interesting um, that I could probably use these in the same capacity um, and just have them like switch around. And then I'll, like I have a little bit more of this so that this can be like the main color. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with that. So keep an eye out for whips because if I'm feeling like a small little palette cleanser project in the middle of all these sweaters I've been knitting up, um, then I will definitely cast something like this on, I think, before reaching for new yarn. Next up, we've got Drops Lima. <laughs> I know it seems like I only work with Drops yarns. I have literally only talked about Drops yarns except for that one um, Duvet d'Anjou that I picked up in France. But I promise the other yarns are coming. I just, I want to organize this by supplier and weight and just kind of have my little system. So yes, I am addicted to Drops yarn. I love Drops yarn, but it is not the only yarn I use, I promise. Um, or that I have leftovers of, I guess is a more accurate way to phrase that. Um, but this is Drops Lima. It is... Let's see what it is. It's wool and alpaca. It's 65% wool, 35% alpaca, uh, yarn group B. So the recommended needle size is four millimeters here. And I used it to knit my first um, outdoor sweater or to again said, um, which was the Mountaineer sweater from Novita. Um, and they're a Finnish design and yarn company. And they recommended this Finnish yarn that I really can't get in Norway called Novita Natura, um, which is kind of like Letlepi, um, if you'll remember from my first and second vlogs. It's like that kind of scratchy Icelandic yarn um, that I, I kind of, I didn't want to use. And this was similar weight. Um, so I have this left over from that sweater. And this was the main color, so I think I have the most of it left over. Um, and it's kind of, it's this pearl gray shade. So I've got quite a bit of it. I've got a skein and then some change. And I've got two of the accent colors that I used, this navy blue color, and then also this kind of, gosh, I don't even know what I would call this, kind of just like a cloudy blue. Um, so I'm just gonna call it cloudy blue and navy blue and I will look up official shade terms. So, cloudy blue. There are eight grams of it, and six grams of navy blue. So that's pretty cool. It's almost the same amount. So, I mean, maybe not enough to use like a full, I don't know, like it, it might be a mittens project. Maybe, maybe I'll make a pair of like, if you've seen the um, the Islander Genzer kind of pattern going around, it's, it's it was very, very popular last year. Um, it was, it's this traditional Icelandic fisherman sweater where you have kind of this white background and then you've got these um, kind of checks all over it. Um, but what I'm thinking is I could make a pair of mittens, mittens again, but I, I really do want to start making more mittens, um, with this as the base color and then have like little specks of these two, um, kind of 
in the middle of them. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, so I, I think I'm in love with the idea now. So I think I'm just gonna put that down on the sheet as um, what I'm gonna end up doing with my Drops Lima. Um, and that will definitely use up these two. And it should make a pretty good dent in the main color. So I just wanna see how much of the main color I have left. In addition to the skein, I have five grams. So I've got 55 grams of the Drops Lima in what I'm going to call pearl gray. So <laughs> expect a very mitten heavy podcast um, in a couple months maybe when I'm, I'm off my sweater knitting frenzy craze thing that I, I am in the middle of at the moment. Um, and I want some smaller projects that are gonna make some dents in my stash. I think mitten knitting is also a great gift thing for Christmas. So maybe I'll make some mittens and I'll give them away as Christmas presents. I think that would be quite fun. Um, so I might have a lot of these out around Christmas time and then you can kind of see what happened to the stash yarn. Um, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited to get started on those as well. So here's all my drop sky. So I've got two full skeins of what I want to say is off-white. Yeah, it's color 01, which is off-white typically in the, um, in the drops yarns. Um, so we've got 100 grams here and 21 grams here. So this is like two and a half skeins of Drop Sky. And I have, I think this is called Hazelnut, the contrasting color, which is kind of, it's a blob because I was kind of knitting from both ends at one point. Um, and I have eight grams of this. And what I was thinking would be kind of cute. Um, one of my friends, from work suggested knitting up Banya in like a snowy white as like a really cute summer cardigan. And Banya does not actually take me that long to knit um, because it is a lace, like open design. And the yoke I remember took me like four days to get done at like a kind of leisurely knitting pace. Um, so I was thinking I could make a Banya cardigan in white with drop sky because it kind of, I think they recommend four millimeter needles for this yarn, um, but because it's lace, you want to use a needle size that's a little bit larger, and Banyu uses 4.5 millimeter needles. So that would be ideal, and it's, it's just so soft, so it would be kind of like, I don't know, like over like summer dresses and like, you know, open shoulder tops and things that you would wear. It would be kind of like a nice cover up because it would be warm and it would also be like comfortable to have against your bare skin. And maybe, I don't know if this is super wild, but Bonnie has these I-cord bind offs at the bottom and at the sleeves. And I might do that in a contrasting color, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I could do it completely unicolor. I think that would work. And then I could just have this as like, Maybe it could go in with my Drops Nepal. I think it could fit that color scheme as well. So like it wouldn't be completely bogus to do that and then just make like a pure white Bonia cardigan. Um, like a Bonia Edelweiss edition or something because it's kind of, it's named after a flower. So <laughs> that would be quite cool. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, I'm sold on the white bunya idea, and if I can use yarn from my stash to do that instead of just buying all fresh yarn, I am very much into that. <laughs> 